Recently, I learned how to send messages between contracts on Ethereum and contracts on Optimism. So in this video, I'll share you what I learned. What we'll do is we'll set up the faucet for Optimism and also set up the network. And then we'll deploy a contract on Ethereum testnet and Optimism testnet. And then we'll send some message from Ethereum testnet over to Optimism testnet. And what I mean here when I say send message, it means that by sending a message, we'll be able to call contract on L2 from L1. So the first step is to set up a faucet for Optimism and also set up the network for testnets. The first thing that I'll do is register the network for Sepolia testnet onto my MetaMask. And all we have to do is go to Optimism documentation and I'll paste this link in the description. So just follow the link. And then from here, click on this link. This will open another tab and then go ahead and click on connect. Here I'm setting the network on MetaMask and my MetaMask will pop up. So I'll click on switch network. Opening MetaMask, I can confirm that now I am on Optimism Sepolia testnet. If your MetaMask does not have Sepolia testnet, then you also need to configure this. Once we have the testnets registered on the MetaMask, the next thing that we need to do is get some ETH on testnet. So there are two ETHs that we need to get, one on Sepolia and one on OP Sepolia. Also from the official documentation, I'll click on this link to get ETH on Sepolia and click on this link to get ETH for OP Sepolia. Clicking on this link will open a new tab that looks like this. Go ahead and paste your address here and get some ETH for Sepolia. Next, click on this link. This will open another tab, so go ahead and fill out the form and get some OP Sepolia ETH. Once that's done, you can open your MetaMask to check that you have ETH on OP Sepolia and you can also check on Sepolia testnet that you also have some ETH. So once that's done, the next step is to write our contract and then deploy it on these two testnets. Okay, back in MetaMask, so step one is done. Let's now write a contract and we'll deploy it both on L1 and L2. What we'll do is write a simple contract called Greeter. And what we're going to do is send a message from L1 to L2. To call a contract from L1 to L2, we'll need to send a message to a specific contract deployed on the testnet. This contract is called cross domain messenger. And by sending a message to this contract, this message will be relayed over to optimism L2. Now there are two functions that we need to know to be able to send a message to L2. The first function, the easy one is called send message. You'll specify the target and some kind of call data and gas limit to be spent on L2. So we'll be calling this function to send a message over to the L2 contract. And also we have another function called X domain message sender. When our message is relayed over to L2, our L2 contract will be executed. Inside the L2 contract, message sender will be this cross domain messenger contract that is also deployed on L2. If you wanted to get the address of the greeter contract on L1, then we will need to call this function to get its address. These two functions will become more clear as we write our code. Okay, so let's write our code. The first thing that I'll do is create a constant which will hold the address of the messenger contract, the cross domain messenger contract. Say address, public immutable. Since there are two different messengers, one on L1 and one on L2, we'll make this immutable and we'll set it when we deploy our contract. Messenger, here are the two addresses for the messenger. On ETH Sepolia testnet, this will be the address of the messenger. And on OP Sepolia, this will be the address of the messenger. Okay, next we'll create a state variable called remote greeter. This will hold the address of the greeter contract on the other chain. For example, if this contract is deployed on L1, then this state variable will hold the address of the greeter contract on L2. And if this contract is on L2, then this state variable will hold the address of the greeter contract on L1. Address public, we'll call this remote greeter and then let's now write the constructor constructor will pass in the address of the messenger and say messenger is equal to messenger next we'll write a function to set the remote greeter so say function set remote greeter address remote greeter external and then say remote greeter remote greeter is equal to remote reader. We'll keep this example simple and I'm not going to worry about authorization. 
anyone will be able to set the address of remote reader. Okay, next, let's write a function to send the message over to the L2 contract. So say function send, you'll send a message, string, call data, reading, external. Okay, so we'll call the I cross domain messenger at the address messenger. So if we deploy this reader contract on L1, then it's also calling a messenger contract on L1 and then call send message. We will need to pass three parameters, target. Target will be the remote reader. Message will be the message that we want to send. So this is like if you're dealing with the low level call function, this will be like the raw data that you're sending when you're executing the function call. Say abi.encode call. We'll write a function later and encode the parameters. Okay, and the last parameter will be gas limit. Gas limit. Let's set this to, let's say, 200,000. So this is how we will send a message to the messenger contract on L1. And once this message is sent, this message will be relayed over to L2 and then execute the contract on L2. Next, let's fill out this part. Let's write a function that we'll call on the remote greeter. So say function. What we'll do is, the function that we'll create is, we'll call it set. And what we're going to do is, set a greeting for some address. So I'll create a mapping, mapping from address to string, call it public greetings, greetings. So set, we'll take in two parameters, address of sender and string call data greetings. And what we'll do is set the greeting for sender, greetings, of sender set it equal to greeting. Now when we deploy this contract on L2, we don't want anyone to be able to just set a greeting. We only want the messenger deployed on L2 to be able to call this function. So what we'll have to do is say require message.sender is equal to messenger. And let's say for the error message not messenger. So now the first check checks that message.sender is equal to the messenger contract. We're going to deploy this greeter contract both on L1 and on L2. From L1, we're going to call this function send and try to execute this function set that is also deployed on L2. So we made sure that on L2 message.sender is equal to the messenger on L2. But how do we check that the message came from this greeter contract on L1? Well, we can get the sender of L1 by calling this function x domain message sender so over here let's say require i cross domain messenger messenger x domain message sender so the message sender on l1 that called into this function and this should be equal to the remote greeter for the greeter contract deployed on l1 this remote greeter will reference the l2 contract and for the greeter contract that will be deployed on L2, this remote greeter will reference the greeter contract deployed on L1. So this function over here, X domain message sender, is how we get message sender that sent the message over from L1. And if these two don't match, let's just say not authorized. Okay, so that completes the function for set. Let's now complete the function for send. So send a message. And what function do we want to call on the remote greeter? Well, it's going to be this function, set. So inside here, say this.set. Call the function set. With the parameters, the parameters are sender. Let's say message sender, message sender. And the next parameter will be greetings. So this will be greetings that we get from here. Greetings. Okay, I'll hit Control S to see if the contract compiles. And the contract compiles. This is a contract that will deploy both on L1 and on L2. The next step is to deploy this contract both on L1 and on L2. Click on the deployment tab and click on injected provider. And I'll make sure that I'm on Sepolia testnet. Okay, and I'll deploy this contract. So for the constructor argument, we will need to pass in the address of the messenger. On L1 will be this address, paste it here, and then deploy the contract. Okay, once the contract is deployed, I'll make a note here saying that the L1 contract is deployed here. Next, we'll deploy the contract on L2. So, 
I'll click on my MetaMask and I'm going to switch over the network over to OP Sepolia. Click OP Sepolia and then make sure that the network has changed on Remix. And then we'll deploy the greeter contract this time on L2. On L2, we'll need to pass in the messenger address using this address. Paste it here and then deploy the contract. Confirm the transaction and wait for the contract to deploy. Okay, the contract is now deployed. So we have L1 contract and L2 contract. What is the next step? The next step is to set the remote greeter contracts. Currently we're on OP Sepolia, so let's set the remote greeter contract to be the L1 greeter contract. Copy the address of the L1 greeter contract and inside the L2 greeter contract, I'll call the function set remote greeter, paste the address, and then call the function. Confirm the transaction. Okay, once the transaction goes through, let's check remote greeter. Okay, so this is the address of the L1 greeter contract. Next, we'll switch over to L1 and then set the remote greeter contract on the L1 greeter contract. Switch over to Sepolia. Make sure that the network switched also on Remix. And then we'll call the L1 greeter contract. Set remote greeter and the address of the remote greeter will be this one. I'll copy this and then paste it here and then call the function. Confirm the transaction and wait for the transaction to go through. Okay, after the transaction goes through, the next step is to send message to L2. So make sure that we're on L1, Sepolia testnet. And what we're going to do is call the function send. We're going to be sending a message to this L2 greeter contract. And what we expect to happen is on the L2 greeter contract, we expect that this function will be called and we'll set the greetings. So from L1, let's say hello l2 call the function send and confirm the transaction so what we're doing now is calling this function we're telling the messenger contract on l1 to call the contract on l2 the address of the contract is the remote greeter this will be the l2 greeter contract and we want to execute the function called set with the parameters message sender and greeting i'm going to wait a few minutes for the message to relay over to l2 once the message is relayed, it will automatically execute this function. And afterwards, we'll query greetings on the L2 contract. Okay, I waited a few minutes for the message to relay over to L2. Let's check that our transaction went through on L2. So first thing that I'm going to do is switch the network over from Sepolia to OP Sepolia. Click on MetaMask, and then switch the network over to OP Sepolia. And then we'll check the greetings. We sent the parameter with message sender. Message sender will be this address over here. So I'll copy this, scroll down, and then open the L2 greeter contract. And we'll paste the address in here and then call greetings. And we get the message, hello L2. This is amazing. We sent a message over from the L1 contract and magically the L2 contract was executed. So in this video, we call the contract from L1 over to a contract on L2. In the next video, I want to do the opposite. I want to send the transaction from L2 and then call contract on L1. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.